Oops. <laughs> about me talking to a camera. It is amazing. Um, but I have been having like a lot of thoughts, right? About teaching and working and searching for work and like looking for an internship right now. Thinking a lot about the tyranny of internship searches and hiring loops. It's crazy out there. Lawless. I also started looking back at some of my older videos and I think I don't make no sense, but I definitely don't make all of the sense. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Play Kid Gloves. Spirit is level 10. Is that right? I think that's right. <laughs> yeah, teaching's been a ton of fun. I feel like it really matches my strengths and uh, the things that I'm not as good at. I do get feedback on and I can build structures that help me be more consistent, for example, because um, one thing that I'm really great at is going for the opportunity when there's a learning moment happening and leaning into that, responding. But, you know, what you lose is having the plan you stick to be the thing. Um, so navigating like and fine tuning those smaller little screws in the system has been really fun and challenging. I can't believe I get to do that at the University of Michigan. I think um, graduate student instructors are just so lucky. Um, we have a great organization and union support through the Graduate Employee Organization, GEO. Um, and in, in the communications classes that I teach in the Literature, Sciences, and Arts Department, it's just uh, so good. The, the students that I work with are like athletes and writers for the Michigan Daily, which is this awesome newspaper, and um, cartoonists for the Michigan Daily, um, international students who come from like really interesting places, uh, and then even within the U.S., like within Michigan and different um, like rural towns and stuff that I, I didn't know about, and then like other parts of the U.S. too. Just like so many people that you get to interact with, and it's a really cool culture and community that's built in to my experience here, and I'm so glad because you know being in the school of information does have its like fences and parameters and limits that I have to work within. And a part of that is uh, you know the culture of the high school has been more quiet, like the building that has our department in it has been. Uh, like, I think much of the campus pretty um, quiet, and there's, you know, not a lot of footsteps pattering down the hall. So, um, this gives me another team that I play for, um, as I like to think of it, and that's just really great. <laughs> to be a challenge because um, I again had a lot of time over the summer to spend time on this but now I feel like every free moment I get is just like processing um, so in other words like trying to create another story on top of all of the other work and thinking going on it's like 
a whole nother construction project when I already have a few big capital campaigns going on and stuff that keeps me busy and thinking. Um, it just, you know, this is going to be pretty low quality, I feel like. But um, I am going through the internship process and doing the job search and talking to people and like getting really good at research and qualitative methods and owning my voice as like someone who works in the kinds of ways that I do. And um, it's been really fun to collaborate and find like my thing. So I have stuff to talk about. I guess I should maybe carve out some time on the weekends that is more structured where I can talk about this kind of thing. and. Um, make it a staple in how I use my time. I don't know. I do like to explore through through moving images. I do, I really do. And, and verbal. I like words a lot. So this combines some of my two favorite things. And um, it also is like a form of record keeping and documentation. The other, the things, some things I don't like though. So some things I don't like about this. I don't like the, our thoughts around media consumption. Um, I don't like our thoughts around media consumption. And part of me wonders about in, in the United States, there's a whole culture that is fat phobic. And I think it's a very real and legitimate part of how we socialize ourselves and moralize our behaviors. Like they are normative, they guide our sense of direction and how we, you know, the rules that govern how we think and behave. It happens around weight and like body image stuff. And here's where I'm going with this. Like, I don't think it's a coincidence that the language we have around media is that it's consumption. I think there is a moral dimension of the stuff that we we consume in media, which is every you know it's a lot. The media is like a story, and anything from a poster for a movie or the movie itself or you know, people talking about a movie through a YouTube commentary, and uh, podcast and radio, Spotify, music, all of that stuff is media, and that we talk about our media diet and like media that we've been consuming and, and binging, and that there's an idea that like binging is you know you've lost control or something. I think that's really fun. I think that's kind of weird. I think that's kind of weird, and I don't think it's a coincidence that. In the United States, we have this, uh, I don't know, language we use around weight and eating food. So uh, I'm not saying that it's like, you know, a completely clear connection, but I don't think it's a coincidence. I think they're related in some interesting ways. Um, and that is one thing I don't like about making movies on YouTube for my channel. But Another thing I don't like about it is it makes me think kind of differently about um, my life. And I have to, um, there's a, a theory about like self-presentation that came out in the 50s or 60s with this guy, uh, Irving Goffman. So Goffman had this idea that the, there's presentation of self and there's impression management and you have a front stage public behavior and you have a backstage private behavior or one that's kept to close friends. And I feel like YouTube is a weird crossing of some of these flowers of like front and backstage behavior where like I'm sitting and we're having like this super close conversation and I, I do like the sense of closeness that it offers, but is that like genuine? Honest question, I'm not sure. Um, and is it healthy? Because then I start to internalize certain narratives and stories about myself and um, and then I'm also looking for feedback and a reaction, which you know, other you know creative friends in my life have had the good feedback of like, yes, but this you know creating something does tell you about yourself for that time. It's like a time capsule, and when you put it out there, you got to abandon the project 
and forget about it. You know, it's out of your hands. <laughs> this YouTube thing, when I looked at the last like posts, they were super inconsistent from like, six, seven months ago to like one month ago. If there's anything interesting um, before I sign off, just a lot of stuff about, um, you know, this thought I had about like overthinking the internship process, a big circle to you, but to the interviewer, it's just like a tiny little sand pebble. More specific questions like how do you ex researchers communicate impact? Like, is it a reporting method? And like, how many reports do they publish? How often? Here I was thinking about like different ways to um, to think about the star problem. So like in interviews, people will say it's best practice to consider the situation, the task, the action, and the result, the star method. And I was like, you know, what is go actually going on here? Like they're actually wanting to know like what's the situation, what's the problem which I I'm not even sure what is that the dots and the solution is the action is that an arrow <laughs> and then there's results I don't know if that's a helpful visualization and then just thinking about my own path you know like these different stages and tiers and levels of like whew, how things move in uh, this vertical way in my mind, building off each other. I mean, it's actually like more like <laughs> disorganized, but you know, I was teaching in Spain and then I was doing like fake, I wouldn't say, I shouldn't say fake. It was a, uh, you know, it was honest UX research for what I knew at the time. And then I went in and did this master's program. And now like where I see myself going next is like full-time employee as a UX researcher on a team influencing product decisions with stories, evidence from the field, and working with users. So I have stuff too here about how I think about working with different teams. So, you know, things I've really come to look for is trust. There's a reading in my first semester uh, taking a class with Kentaro Toyama at the University of Michigan, and it was about how Trust on teams helps creativity and higher quality work. It's a really good reading. I could link that, honestly. And, you know, emotional intelligence, like that's a really big thing. Uh, I have a team that I work with now who will ask me, they're like, you know, Phil, I can see like you look kind of down, man. How's your week been going? And they just check in with me and it, I think it makes it, you know, feel really authentic. And um, the other one is, is it joyful? Like, does this team have fun? And then, diverse you know i just have noticed that like even when there are working styles that i don't immediately understand like for example um sometimes i have teams where i work with somebody who's just super quiet for a long time and then in my head i'm like you know why aren't they saying anything <laughs> this is kind of strange but then they end up saying something really profound and they're really watchful and they're great listeners or the way that they think the way they think is so different and it adds so much value. Um, and you think to yourself like, wow, I never would have had that idea. I'm so glad that this person adds this dimension of complexity to the team. And so if you have lots of neurodiversity and different backgrounds and ways of thinking on a team, like your work is gonna be better. Uh, at least that's been my experience. And then, you know, creative and energetic teams, like those are some other things I've been thinking about too. I've been thinking about also like, what have, what do people look for in an interview? And I feel like they think about problem solving, drive, results or impact. And then sometimes they look for leadership if it's like a project management role, but other times they look for communication. You know, like, can you talk with people on a team and like convey ideas and receive them and follow up on certain ideas to execute? 
and get those results. And like, do you stick with it? Are you motivated? Um, and then like, can you work through stuff? That's hard. So, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Satisfying ending. Maybe I'll make a cup of tea. <laughs>